Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I know the fate of the bill, but I am going to debate the bill because what I have to say, I would like to be taken into consideration when the good gentleman uh, from Northern Idaho chooses to set this budget. I'd ask unanimous consent, Mr. Speaker, to read from an email from a student from Boise State University dated uh, March 2nd, 2021. Without objection. There's been an objection, but we don't object from our seat. We stand up, we object. I recognize that there's an objection from, just, from the good gentleman from District 15. So you may paraphrase, you may describe, but you cannot read. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And um, Mr. Speaker, point of order, can I move to read this? Motion's always in order. I move to read this particular email from a student of Boise State University because it is critical to what's going to be happening with regards to setting policy at Boise State University. We have a motion before us that the gentleman be allowed to read the email. Is there debate on that motion? Gentleman from 13. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate the good gentleman's attempt to cut this off at the pass and to try to get this budget back to Boise, or back to JFAC because he understands the uh, fate of what's gonna happen with this budget. But there is issues with regards to what's happening in our universities, and since we have uh, proof from a student who I know personally that has emailed me, I would like that to uh, be written or read into the record. And for members, as they're considering those budgets uh, moving forward, they would have a flavor of exactly what students are facing. And so I'd ask for permission to this body to read portions of this email. Is there further debate? on the motion to read, in, from 19. In, indeed, Mr. Speaker, I'm opposed to the motion only because uh, this isn't a, a criminal case. I don't need proof of anything. And if the standard that is being established here for justifying reading emails, I've received countless emails from students. And you don't want me reading those because they too are germane to the conversation that we might have. So I think we should probably just stick with paraphrasing. Is there further debate on the motion to read the email. Hearing none, then the debate is closed. The question before us is, shall the gentleman be allowed to read uh, from the email, the aforementioned email in his debate? Clerk will unlock the machine and the members will record their votes. Does every member voted? Yes, they have. Does any member wish to change his vote? The clerk will lock the machine and record the vote. Vote count shows 54 in favor with 15 against and one absent. The motion has uh, carried. The gentleman has the floor to debate and read from the aforementioned email. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members of the body. Here's the email. I am a student at Boise State this year in the music department. This year has obviously been very challenging in education as a whole due to the pandemic and everything else that went on. However, it seems during these times, professors are choosing to use their influence as educators to sway the minds of people and are directly backing and encouraging one-sided political ideologies, and is the as is the case last summer with respect to candidates running for office. My guess is that this is a large violation, not only of their campus employee contracts, see the screenshots below, but also in violating the taxpayer dollars that fund the university because it only backs one viewpoint on most everything. Some of the things that we were taught or was said in class, and I quote, if you are not doing X, Y, or Z, you are racist. Your, music's, your music needs to have a political motivation behind it or it's invalid, end quote. Quote, black composers and their music should be played over that of white composers end quote, and a lot of, and a lot of crit critical race theory type things. I have specific evidence and proof that I can get for you if anything is needed. I will skip down. Not only this, but I have personally been silenced in class for speaking my mind in open discussion setting. A professor was calling on students individually to hear their thoughts on how black composers' music is superior to that of white composers and how it needs to be elevated. My peers all agreed that this was the case, and when it got to me, I started to say, quote, 
I do not believe skin color or ethnicity has anything to do with the quality of music you can write or perform, end quote. I was promptly told to, quote, be quiet, end quote, and, quote, we need to move on before I was even allowed to defend myself, let alone finish the sentence. There is an entire group of the American population that holds viewpoints that aren't being represented or allowed to be discussed without great scorn from the professors and other faculty. I do so, um, <clears throat> not only this, but I've also been personally silenced in class for speaking my mind in open settings and told that my work is, um, let me skip down. This is not only occurring in the music department either, but incur incur occurring all over campus, sometimes in the most direct sense, but such as in regards to the big city coffee shop scenario. There were professors who were encouraged, that, who encouraged the protest that took place, calling students to action against the coffee shop due to the thin blue line that was displayed on the other side of the shop that was located off of campus. This, Mr. Speaker, and I could go on for quite some time, but I think you get the flavor of exactly what's happening at my institution of higher learning where I am an alumnus. I'm disgusted. I'm embarrassed and I'm ashamed. And I told the government affairs director when he came in my office to lobby me on behalf of this budget that I would read this. And I told him one of the things that I respected about Boise State University when I attended there was the vast majority of my political science professors I could not tell what their political ideology is, or was. If I took the conservative approach, they took the liberal approach. If I took the liberal approach, they took the conservative approach. They encouraged discussion. They encouraged thought. They wanted to make you think, and they wanted to make you understand what it was like to, to convey your thoughts in the real world and to defend your thoughts and your positions in the real world. That is not happening at Boise State University today. There has been a direct shift in the ideology that's being taught at Boise State University. I debated against this budget last year. I intend to debate it again until this issue gets fixed. Our tax dollars, the money that we are appropriating, and it's my understanding they're going to get $39 million of additional federal money this year to higher ed, does not be, need to be spent silencing kids' voices on, the, on our college campuses. I fundamentally and strongly believe in an individual's right to speak their mind and to debate their opinion. That's what we do in this body, and we should not be seeking to silence their voices. Secondly, the proportion of ideologies that are antithetical to what this country was founded on, I have strong objection to. And so, Mr. Speaker, I know this budget's gonna, gonna die. But I'm asking the folks that when they go into JFAC that they call those college presidents forward and ask for change to take place at our institutions of higher learning. We can do better. We should do better. We must do better. And so I urge your red light.